If you would like to learn how to build a camper van like this yourself, then please check out my other YouTube videos. So if you guys have found these videos helpful, you can help me out in a big way by picking up a copy of my first ever album that my brother and I recorded in Nashville late last year. Any proceeds will go to future recording projects as well as taking the band on tour and hopefully promoting it. I'll leave a link in the description and talk a little bit more about it at the end of this video. Okay, first up then for our awning, we want to create an attachment point so you can get a C channel which can run across the side of your van here. You can go ahead and install that and your awning will simply um, just thread through into that C channel. I'll try and add a picture of one of those. I'm going to add some of these on top of my roof rack here. If you want to know how to make a roof rack like this, I've got another video showing you how to do that. And I'm simply, as you can see on this, just drilling some pilot holes first and then I'm just screwing these into place. So I'm going to add three along this side and they're going to be my attachment points for my uh, awning slash canopy. And I'm going to put a few more around this roof rack as well just to uh, use for some netting later. This is the material that I'm going to be using. This is waterproof and UV resistant material. Uh, specifically for use with canopies. You can find this on eBay and other things like that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off this edge here and we're going to get try and get a nice cut like this. So I've just drawn a pencil mark all across the side. I'm going to do the same on this side as well and on my other sheet and just cut it using some fabric scissors just to make sure I get a nice clean cut. You can also use a rotary cutter for this job as well, that might help you get some nice straight lines as you cut. So I want to join my two pieces of material together now. Of course you don't have to make yours as big as this, you could just use one metre, but then of course you're limited by the size of the material that you can buy. So what I'm going to do is I've just overlapped these two here, as you can see there's probably about an inch or so in there. Nice little creepy crawly. <laughs> um, and then what I'm going to do is basically just sew up the middle part here. So I'm just going to go ahead join these together. You can either use some basting tape which is basically some double sided sticky tape which I do like using but unfortunately I'm starting to run out of. Uh, but you'll just pop one side on and then peel off the cover to reveal the other sticky side to stick them together. Or you can just use the traditional method of some pins and just pin them across uh, pushing it through the material at the bottom and then back out. So now that I've basted and I've pinned these two materials together uh, as you can see across here several pins just making sure that stays in place. I'm now going to put it through the sewing machine. Now as you can see this is a pretty epic procedure considering how small my sewing machine is. So I've just folded it in the sides to try and help it through and I'm also using the table here to try and hold some of the weight of the material as well. I'm just going to slowly feed it through and again like we have done before with our curtains and as well as our seat cushions as well we're going to make sure that we stitch forward about four or five stitches and then we're going to go back on ourselves four or five stitches and then carry on straight till the very end and then again we'll go back on ourselves and do the uh, the over stitch just to make sure that the thread doesn't come away so we can begin our stitching now like I say start from the very top and stitch your way through so as you can see this is not going to be an easy stitch so I've already done a little bit of mine and then I decided I need some more pins so I pulled it out but what you're going to want to do is start from the very top Let's go forward about four or five stitches and then reverse it. You should have a reverse button on here. Go back over that four or five times and you can carry on going straight forward all the way to the end of your piece. Uh, now just take your time with this just to make sure the two pieces line up correctly. Ow! <laughs> just want to make sure that your material was not holding it back from going through the machine as well. So this is just a simple straight stitch that we're using here. And when you get to one of your pins, just pull your pin out, okay? You could bring your material up to stop it being held down by its own weight.
Okay, now we've done the one line down here, I'm actually going to go ahead and thread another line down this other side just to tie this bit down. Look at the size of that beast. As you can see, we've got two lines now running across here. So if we look on the other end, you can see it's just tying each of those in. Not my best sewing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> it was really difficult to get all this material through the machine. So this is the first time I've ever made a canopy slash awning and the best advice I could give you when you're running the material through the machine is just make sure that it's supported on either side, you know, if you can pop it on a table to take the weight off so that it can run through the machine nice and smoothly. Make sure you're pinned in well all the way along or if you're using the uh, tape, make sure that's uh, running all the way along just to help it all hold into place and just take your time through it to try and get those nice clean straight lines. So my attachment points are going to be on my roof rack in my case, yours might be a C channel. So I measured out the width of those and I just marked out the width across here and also across this side as well. So I knew I could go 70 centimeters over from each center point here where I started sewing. So 140 centimeter width in total that I had. So there's my first 70 centimeter point. And what I've done is I've then drawn up into the middle point there at an angle and as you can see this line also meets there in the middle point and goes off to this other 70 centimeter point so my awning slash canopy isn't actually going to be a rectangle we're actually going to have almost like a, a bit of a diamond shape going on here for the sake of making your life a whole lot easier you don't have to cut yours to this kind of shape you can just leave it as a rectangle okay so now that I've marked out where I want to make my cuts I'm going to go ahead and use those fabric scissors again and just very carefully cut along there, trying to keep make it as nice and smooth as possible. I'll take extra care to follow those lines as best as I can. Great, so if you want to do a canopy like mine, you can go around and cut all your edges. If you're leaving yours as just a rectangle, just make sure you don't have any tethered edges. If you do, just go along those and just cut a straight line across it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to each of my six sides, one at a time. I'm going to either baste or pin these into place. I'm just going to fold it over around about an inch or so, and then we're going to sew along here very shortly. So do one side at a time, pin it into place, and then we can take it to the machine, sew it, and then we fold the other one, it's going to lap over the top of this one. You can see I've just popped a little magnetic guide into place. This is actually marked out in millimetres on this machine, um, so here should be around about an inch, just after the 22 there. That should be about 25 millimetres. So yeah, we're going to make a one inch seam allowance there. So as before then, we're just going to simply run our material through the machine here. Starting at the very top bit. Yeah. So four stitches forward and four back, and then off we go all the way to the end. Start taking out the pins as well as we go along. And that magnetic guide should just help make sure that we guide it along and make sure we get a nice one inch seam allowance as we go. You might need to just help your material along as well because it's so dense. So as before then, I'm getting to the very end. So I'm going to go right up to the end of the fabric. And then I'm going to reverse back four or five stitches. And then forward again until I get to the end. And that just makes sure that the thread doesn't pull its way out. So. You just pull your material away, get a pair of scissors and then just cut it there. Uh, and then we can go ahead and do all the other sides. So just go ahead and do that for all of your sides. You may just have four of you doing sort of a rectangular shape. I've got six on here, so just go ahead, fold them over. You might uh, overlap on each side, I'll show you that. But there's our sewn side. I'm just going to have to fold this over now, like so, to sew the next edge. So as you can see, it's just going to overlap there. So pin those in. Sew all these sides round. So as you can see, there's my canopy. 
and we've gone around all of these edges and sewn them up just like so so next up then folks we want to add some eyelets like this and we're going to be using an eyelet punch so these are going to allow our canopy poles to feed through these eyelets I've got four here actually I've got one on this side one over here one over there one over there and then on this side I've got three eyelets as you can probably see and we're going to put some snap hooks through those and they're then going to hook onto my roof rack uh, to attach the canopy to the van itself. Um, I'm also going to put, feed some guide ropes through these as well um, just to help tension it off as well. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to do those eyelets. Um, what I'm actually going to be doing in this instance now is I'm actually going to make some eyelets for these lights here, these little solar powered sort of Edison bulb styled lights and they've got little hooks on so I'm going to hook them into the eyelets and they're going to hang off the end of the uh, canopy just to uh, you know add something a little extra to it. First thing you'll want to do then is just take a measurement from your attachment points on your roof rack here and just make a note of those. Once you know the measurements between each attachment point you can then go and mark them out on the end of your canopy ready for the eyelets to be put into place. For what I'm going to be doing right now, where I'm going to be putting some eyelets in place for these little LED lights to attach to, um, I've actually just laid it out across the span of my canopy here, and I'm going to mark it out where each light is basically sat. So I'm just going to mark these off with a little cross on each one, just making sure there's enough slack in the lights if you want to add some lights to yours. Of course, take those measurements that you've made from your roof rack attachment points, add those in, add all those canopy pole attachment points, and then we'll almost be ready to add the eyelets in. There we go, so you should have several crosses now across your canopy. I would have one there if I hadn't already done it. Great, so I'm going to take my first little cross here. I'm just going to fold the material over like that and using my fabric scissors I'm just going to cut a little bit of a slit in there nothing too big for now and we can get our fabric scissors in there and we can make the cross like so start small and then you can make it bigger if you need to afterwards you don't want to go too big straight away so it's going to be difficult to resurrect so you should end up with something like that a little cross there in your material. Once you've got that cross you can then feed your eyelet through. So we want this side to be on the top and you'll also have a little bottom plate like this that will sit in there. And you want to push this through that little cross that you've made. Now if you can't get it through because there's not enough room this is when you can start opening up that little cross just a little bit more just to help get that in. Once you've made that hole big enough you can then push this through like so. There we go. She should have something like that. Um, and then using that little bottom thinner ring I'm just going to sit on the underside of the canopy. Uh, you can then place that over the top. Basically what we're going to do is you can turn your canopy over turn part way over like so What you're going to do is you want to place this part of the ring on top of your punch set Okay, so in your punch set you'll have two pieces This is going to be the base and this is going to be the actual punch which you're going to use a hammer to come down on um, But you want to place this part of the ring so the bit that's going to be on the top side of the canopy over your base of your punch set like that and th then we want to put the ring over the top like so okay and then we're going to take the punch as you can see it's got a tapered edge so as we apply force to that it's going to push this inner diameter outwards and then it's going to hold that ring in place and it's going to hold the whole eyelet in place so I've got my punch on then using a hammer or a mallet we can come down on the top with a fair bit of force just to make sure they separate and as you can see 
that eyelet is now being held into place because these edges have then been forced outward. Okay, so you can go ahead and do that for all of your eyelets using that same procedure. So when we're using the eyelet punch, you want to be putting this end with the bit that's sticking up on top of the base of the punch set and then the thinner ring bit will sit over the top of that and then we'll use the punch inside of there. Cool, so there we have it, there's our canopy all resurrected. So as you can see what I've done here is I've just popped these canopy poles that I've got on, I think it was Amazon, um, just through one of the eyelets and then I've attached the guy rope to the top and then I'm just using that to help support it. And uh, there's the snap rings there that attach to the top of the roof rack. So I have three along here, like so. And yeah, like I say, just pull the guy ropes out just to make sure it stays in place. That's looking pretty cool. And then I added all those little eyelets in here for the lights to sit in. So that should hopefully look quite cosy in the evening uh, once it's all set up and charged up. But there we go, that's how to make a canopy. Thanks for stopping by everybody. Please like and subscribe and check out our other content on all things camper. As I mentioned before, I've just recorded my first album and need all the help I can get. So I'll leave you with an album preview for now and a link in the description if you'd like to pick up a copy. She does all that she can You put their cold and harsh demeanor It'll soon come back around So don't let the bastards get you